Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to my NHL 20 franchise mode here in the state of hockey. In the previous episode, we finished up simulating the 2033-2034 regular season, and yet again, the Minnesota Wild go out and collect 60 plus victories. It was a great season, all in all. Everybody really stepped up. We have a lot of really awesome players on this squad. Now, this franchise mode has been fun as hell. But you all know that this series could be ending sooner than later. Don't worry, I'm not stopping recording or anything. If this does end, I will simulate out the rest of it and do like a few special episodes or something along those lines. Because I want to start up my next franchise mode pretty soon. Not like this one is getting stale. But just like the Columbus one, it's good to get a mix of other things going. I have a lot of ideas. And I know I say that a lot, but I do. It's just about me getting on that and actually doing it. But for right now, we're here in Minnesota. And we're winning every freaking game we possibly can. There weren't a lot of stints this season where we lost. We won... We, uh, going into the trade deadline, we had 50-ish wins. We just dominated the entire NHL. Our worst losing skid was four games. We were the best team in the NHL for I don't know how many years in a row. I should do my research and check, but I'm lazy as hell, and we will not be doing that. At the end of the last episode, we did check the entire season stats. So if you want to go see how the Minnesota Wild did, go ahead and check out the end of last episode. I recommend watching the entire thing, but that's just me. And before we get in talking about the St. Louis Blues and the playoffs, I want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. You guys continue to blow me away with your guys' support. 470 plus subscribers. We're almost at 500. We can totally hit 600 before January 1st, even with the Murder Hornets. <laughs> we can do it, I believe, in you guys. You guys absolutely rock. You guys are the best fans on the entire planet. And I'm not I'm not saying that because you subscribe. I'm saying that because it's a fact. But let's go ahead and talk about the 2034 Stanley Cup playoffs. Obviously, we're in it again. We don't ever miss. Let's talk about the playoff tree. In the East... Islanders, Philadelphia, two teams that we faced in the finals before. You got the Rangers and Pittsburgh Penguins. Rangers we also fought in the finals before. You got Ottawa and Toronto, a, a an Ontario matchup. Poor Toronto Maple Leafs never win anything. And then you got the Boston Bruins and Detroit Red Wings. So my personal favorite in the East is Detroit because I want to face them in a finals matchup. That would be phenomenal content. In the East, you got LA and Winnipeg yet again. It seems like they face off every single season. Anaheim, San Jose, Pacific matchup. Then you got Minnesota, St. Louis, obviously. And the Avalanche and the Dallas Stars. Either of those teams we could be playing, but we're not past St. Louis yet. We still got them to worry about. And obviously, somebody had to go and flush the toilet in the house, obviously. So. So if you hear that in the background, it's nice and peaceful while I rant about my squad. Where was I? Let's let's talk about the St. Louis Blues. 44, 32, and 6. They are the worst team to make it into the Western Conference. As usual, that's how it works because we always win the President's Trophy. I don't know what they look like. We have faced them a, f a handful of times before. But I am intrigued to see what the Blues look like right now. Okay, 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 let's start at the top. Casey Middlestad. Now, if you don't know who Casey Middlestad is, I don't blame you. He was a former 8th overall pick by Buffalo in the 2017 NHL Draft. There's a lot of, not controversy surrounding this guy, but there's a lot of, oh, he's a bust. He's so young, IRL. I think he'll be a decent player for Buffalo. It's, it's only a matter of time. Be, you know, it depends. You could be a Nail Yakupov, or you could be 
a Pasternak. Either one or the other. <laughs> but I'm sure... I'm, he's here in St. Louis, and that's what we're worrying about right now. His wingers make him a much better centerman. You got Pierre LaRoche, a subscriber-created player. Six foot six. He's an absolute rock. He is the first line machine. How has he done in his career so far? 808 points. He's almost exactly a point per game. Man, he's been on St. Louis his entire career. His career season was last year, 95 points, 53 goals. He's good for 50 goals every single season. Absolute monster. The other winger, you got Joachim Kamel. 10th overall pick by St. Louis in 2022, so they're keeping their prospect or their longtime prospects together. Kamel and LaRoche, good for them. He's been a solid player for the St. Louis Blues. Had a few strange years to start his career, but he's pr pretty much averaged out to at least 70 points every single season. That's a really dangerous first line. His centerman could be better for the first line, but I'm assuming they might have an injury or two, especially with their depth on this squad. But you only need a couple decent players on this team to, to, ha to have some damage. That's a lot of damage. Second line, you have Anthony Shirelli, who... I think is an underrated player for the Tampa Bay Lightning. He is going to be a dominant center for them one day. He's already one of their best best players. It's hard to say that for the Tampa Bay Lightning, but he, he'll be good quickly. Don't worry about it. He's great. He's great. Not good for us, but their second line is quite interesting. Filled with a lot of older players on this squad. you got a 35-year-old first-line center, a 36-year-old second-line center, Mitch Marner who went to St. Louis. That is that is strange to see. I mean, St. Louis took Tyler Bozak from Toronto, but now they have Mitch Marner. I mean, Toronto, he had a pretty good career in Toronto, went over to Calgary, and ended up in St. Louis. This is actually his first year in St. Louis. Their right winger, Philip Zadina. And I have this weird relationship with Philip Zadina just because of the 20, 2018 NHL draft. When Montreal, Montreal is my favorite NHL team, by the way. When Montreal was supposed to f pick Philip Zadina third overall, and then they picked the centerman, Jes Jesperi Kotkaniemi, who I love. He's very near and dear to my heart, but at that point, everybody's like, Ew! You should have picked Philip Zadina. Has he had a decent NHL career in this game? Probably. I mean, he was stuck on Detroit for the majority of his career, and I feel really, really bad for him. It was his fault he signed a contract. But he's been a solid 50-point 50, 50 player every single season. Almost 60 points. Too bad. That's some wasted talent there in Detroit. It's a decent top six. Third and fourth line are where things get a little more interesting. you got Matthias Eklund, who is former Vancouver Canuck. Not a, not a, not a great NHL player. But I'm assuming he ha I mean, technically he's a third-line center. I'm assuming they have an injury or two. They have Vacheslav Kraveshenko. <laughs> I love that name. Oh, oh, 22. So that's, that's a pretty young tandem right there. And then you got uh, Ulf Josefsson. He's been on St. Louis for for quite a bit. Eight years. Eighth overall pick. Sniper on that third line. That's not a bad third line right winger. Fourth line, you got Samuel mm, Brit. Cruz. Breathe Cruz. <laughs> Crew is... <laughs> Every single time I do a playoff video, I have no idea how to pronounce somebody's name. My god. Then you got Jenny Hermy. <laughs> and then you got Sergei Zarkov. You know, it's a decent lineup, especially after... You know, after the first and second line, things start to dip off. Their best player after the top six is Josefsson. But they're here for a reason, right? Defense, what's it looking like? Oh, yes. Matteo Jogren. Now, if you don't know who Matteo Jogren is, there's been this kind of rivalry, rivalry, quotation mark, with Quinn Hughes. He's always kind of been the runner-up to Quinn Hughes for the Norris Trophy. This year, he will win the Norris Trophy just because of the absurd amount of points he's had. In the last 82 games, 100 points. He's taking home the Norris. Too bad he breaks the Minnesota Wild streak of consecutive Norrises in a row. 
That is a damn good top line. or t That's a top tier NHL defenseman. You got Tristan Sexton. You got Derocher, Tham, Gosselin, and then McFarland. So after their top pairing, nothing special. And Sexton is 22. Former second overall pick in 2030. So that's a, definitely a top tier pairing. But after that, you got a middle of the... Middle of the run defenseman, nothing, nothing that'll win you a Stanley Cup, but always comes down to goaltending, doesn't it? Their starting goaltender is Sergei Varlamov, not, not Sergei Varlamov as in Sergei Varlamov, Sergei Varlamov as in the Philadelphia Flyers, Sergei Var Var Varlamov. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a bad goalie. Obviously, goaltender overalls in this game don't matter. They don't. They don't. Is he a good playoff goaltender? This is his first time in the NHL to be a goaltender as a starter. It's their backup 23 fringe starter. Hopefully, their starting goaltender gets injured. Any scratch players on the squad? They have Chase Stillman, and then they got Alexander Kovanov. Okay, so he slots in there, definitely making their top... Top nine, a whole lot better. Former Minnesota Wild, I, he hasn't been on this team in a very long time. Did he ever actually play for us? No, he never actually played for us. He was in... Oh, he, yeah, we just trade... When did we trade him away? Did we trade him to Vancouver? We must have. And he's been in St. Louis for two seasons. He's actually been a pretty decent player throughout his career. A bunch of point-per-game seasons here and there from... 2029 to 2031 he was a top tier player for Vancouver but now he's here in St. Louis they also have a defenseman in Rickard Wutelainen uh, honestly not the worst not the worst last wild card spot team I've ever seen make it in the postseason but we are a better squad I have a bad feeling about this series though for some weird reason first game XL Energy Center here we go the quest for seven Stanley Cups is on. First period. 0-0. Zero, zero. I don't like to see that. We're getting outshot by double. Could be better. Second period. Oh, I don't like that. Kovanov obviously scores the first goal on us. Then Mitch Marner twice. And then Jogren. And then Langweeder cuts the lead to three goals. I don't like that. Third period underway. We're basically out of this game. We're going to need a quick goal. They get a power play. They score easily on that. They put in our backup goaltender, I think, a little early. But there's a power play for us. We score Bissonette on the power play. Trying to repeat a phenomenal postseason he had last year. We're not technically out of it. They have a power play. We kill it. It's a two-goal game with six minutes left. It's probably over with. But we... Francis, three minutes left. Minnesota. <gasps> Newman and ties it late! 5-5 five, five in the third period. Four consecutive goals. Tying game number one. Forcing overtime. You know the rules. I know it's been a phenomenal comeback. But we don't jump into an overtime game if it's not an elimination game or the Stanley Cup Finals. Momentum is on our side. Overtime for phase, whatever you call it. Come on, Minnesota. Cap the comeback off. Power play for St. Louis. Oh, come on, Minnesota. Four straight goals in the third period, and you drop it in overtime. Oh, what a disappointing game. Craig Lynn has been hurt in the AHL. I don't care. I mean, I care, but I don't care. Harrison Hadar with a phenomenal game number one. He's quickly becoming my favorite player on this team. Second round pick, right? He's a beauty. Keep it. You keep it up. Pedersen, get your head out of your butt, please. Second game. Second game. Come on. Let's tie this heading to St. Louis. First period. 3 nothing. That's how you start off the game. Anthony Francis, second goal of the postseason. Schoon, the rookie with his first ever goal, and Langweeder gets on the board. Great first period for the boys. Second period. 5 nothing. Kale Newman and Sergei Gogolev get on the board. They're out shooting us by 1, 22-21, but 
we are definitely stomping on them. Third period underway. We blow through them. Power play for St. Louis. Long power play, actually. We actually kill off two straight penalties there. Minnesota looks like they will tie this game heading over to St. Louis. I will take a 5-1 five, five victory. LaRoche with the goal there. And we will win game number two. Score of 5-1. to one. Who was the first star this evening? Christian Pedersen with a great game after a really terrible game number one. I like to see people rebounding on the squad. That's good. That shows character. Heading to St. Louis. Craiglin is back in the age of L. Okay. Cronwell. Oh, he's a defenseman. I have totally forgot to sign depth players for the AHL. Yikes. I am so sorry. <laughs> Oops. Oh, Kudobin is going to be a beauty. One point in two, in two games could be better. But, uh... Keep it going, Minnesota. Keep it going. Game number three, the Enterprise Center. Is it really the Enterprise Center? Okay. Here we go. There's actually a bunch of 2-0 series in this playoff so far. First period. 2-1 St. Louis. Zadinia scores. Hudobin, who I just uh, critiqued. And then Kravesh, uh, Kravchenko. Kravchenko. Takes the lead for St. Louis. 2-1. Could be better at both ends. Eight shots to 12 in, in St. Louis's favor. Second period. Okay, Anthony Francis ties the game. Jogren on the board. Quinn Hughes, the best defenseman in the NHL, ties the game. LaRoche takes the lead. Pedersen, you're being an iffy goalie so far. 24 shots, four goals against. You'd need to be better for us if we want to make it out of this round alive. I knew this team was going to battle us. Something in my mind said, oh, this team is going to... Mm, mm. One goal lead for St. Louis, third period underway. Shots are pretty even. Come on, Minnesota. Two goals, please. Minnesota, do not get shut out in the third period here. One, come on, tie the game, Minnesota. Power play. Anthony Francis ties this game on the power play. Late power play again. Come on, Minnesota. Can't capitalize, and we are headed to overtime just like game number one, can we capitalize this time? Momentum is on our side yet again. Come on, Minnesota. Power play in overtime. And we end it. Enland, the third pairing defenseman in his rookie season, ends it in overtime. The biggest goal of his career to date. That is, I love to see that. Harrison Hader has two points per game, by the way. Absolute draft steal. Game number four, we have the 2-1 lead. Islanders have a 3-0 series lead over Philadelphia, and the Avalanche have a 3-0 series lead over Dallas. Two of our biggest rivals ever facing off in the first round there, and the winner of this series will face them, so that's fun. Game number four, we have a chance to take a stranglehold in this series, heading back to Minnesota. First period. 1-0 St. Louis, they have a lead again. Kovanov with a power play goal. Special teams are going to decide this series. We've seen a lot of special teams action so far throughout these four games. Shots are even 12-12. Pedersen isn't doing too shabby, but the offense needs to help him out. Second period. 1-1. Alexander Kudobin ties... Kudobin, I'm sorry, I don't know why I pronounced the K. Kudobin ties this one up quarter of the way through the second period shots are in our favor now 23 to 20 it is close as close can get third period underway and Schoon the rookie ties it or takes the lead early two straight goals from Schoon this beauty this absolute beauty takes a two goal lead in the third period like an absolute beast 3-1 Minnesota oh yes that is a performance that you want to have. Do not fly under the radar. You want to be noticed. Kale Newman and tops off with a 4-1 goal. Scoom easily with the first star. Quinn Hughes with three assists. Is actually leading this team in points now. Okay. Jogren, you can do so good, but Quinn Hughes, we know, is the man. Okay. Okay. Phenomenal performance from some guys that I wouldn't necessarily expect. Schoon is only a 78 overall, 79 overall. 
This is the performance he needs to have. As a 22-year-old with the medium elite potential, this is the point in his career where he needs to show some character. He doesn't seem like the best NHL player. Three goals in four games says otherwise in the postseason. 31 points, not a bad player. A lot of other guys I need to step that need to step up. Petrangelov has been relatively quiet. Gogolev needs to step up. A lot of guys need to step up if we need to close out the series on home ice. Not need to close out, need. Not, wait, not want to close out, need to close out. In game number five, home ice, chance to head back to the second round. Here we go, first period. 1-0 St. Louis. Mateo Jogren, I bashed him and he scores on the power play. They're out shooting this by almost double, 11-6. Oh, why do I trash players? Never a good idea. Second period. Oh, St. Louis. Suck it, St. Louis. Kale Newman steps up to the call. Why did they pull their goalie so early? Why did they put their backup in like when they took a 2-1 lead? Okay, Kale Newman with two very important goals. J Enland. Makes it a 3-1 game with 35 seconds left. The OT winner to the two-goal lead in the second period. That's making a name for yourself. Shots are pretty even, 21-20. Third period, we have a chance to head to the second round. Casey Millstad has been relatively quiet this series. Makes it a one-goal game with 15 minutes remaining. Come on, Minnesota. Hold the lead for the love of God. Please. Five minutes remaining. Power play late for St. Louis. And Shirelli ties the game on the special team. Two minutes. One minute. And this game is headed to overtime. As I said before, this, this series was going to be decided by special teams. A power play goal late ties this game. A chance to... Force this series to a game six for St. Louis. Oh my god, a massive hit there! What a transition there. A phenomenal hit into the boards. Don't think he'll be walking for a week there. Big chance for Minnesota early. I was talking and they go ahead and ruin it. Oh, and LaRoche has a partial breakaway, but he won't be fast enough there to get a an actual breakaway. At the point, Casey Middlestad in front for LaRoche. Back down to Jogren. Middlestad has a puck. And in front, tries to tip it there. Who Dobin? What's he going to do here? The ro the ro uh, sophomore, I guess? And on the goaltender there, Varlamov with a save to slow this game down. Yeah, my words are getting jumbled here. I just want this series to end for Minnesota. It, it, peop our defensemen are crushing people right now. That's the physicality that I need to see. Harrison Hadar has a chance to end this series right here. Everybody does. Who is going to be the hero here for either team? Zadina over to Mitch Marner, and that is tipped by the glove there. Harrison Hadar, does he have the speed? Number 47 is a, definitely a playmaker. Shoots it on net, does not decide to play around with it, and the puck will head back to Sexton, the defenseman. Sends it over to Kovanov, former Minnesota Wild, back to the point there. And that is saved by Pedersen. 95, Bissonette up to Hadar. Hadar is still out on the ice here. Langweeder, the big body of Langweeder. Uses physicality, physicality there. Parrish with a tip shot in front. But Varlamov will cover up the puck. Okay. Okay. It is a goaltender's duel right now. Pedersen with a weak third period there. This series continues... Gogolev, an impressive third liner, could definitely easily be a first liner with a face-off win over to Bissonette in front for Schoon, and that shot is late. If only he could have one time that this series could be over. But a big save for Varlamov. Gogolev and Shirelli on the face-off here. Gogolev will lose it over to... I won't even try to pronounce that defenseman's name. Shirelli walks into the zone... Uncontested, and there's a... He dumps it into the zone. Bissonette over to Schoon. Back over to Bissonette. He will break up for Kreider, the rookie. What's he going to do here? 
And he will just lose the puck, but he gets it back. Impressive play by the rookie. He Hughes. Hughes. Hughes with the slapper in front, but the defenseman will pick up the puck. Minnesota's trying to regain possession here in the offensive zone, but Kravchenko will regain the puck here, waiting for a change in front for the defenseman. And that, what was that there, Pedersen? Are you kidding me? That's the goal that goes past you. What was that defensive... Oh, no, 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 no. No! No! No. No. Really? Really? What was that rebound? What was the defense? Oh, Minnesota, for the love of God. Okay, this game will go to... This, this series will go to six. With a chance to end it. But we're still here, aren't we? I'm not even gonna- I'm not even gonna look at the replay. I'm done looking at the replay. I saw what happened, you saw what happened. If you want to see it again, go ahead. D uh, double tap the screen and go back a few seconds. Uh, okay. 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 Game number six, we didn't close it out. Again. How many times are we gonna have to do this in a franchise's history? Close it the hell out. You know you're the stronger team, and you're letting them play around with you. First period. 1-0. Anthony Francis with a power play goal. They're doubling us up in shots. Pedersen has been strong so far, but I don't want to give him enough. I don't want to give him any credit at all through this postseason so far. He has one good, one strong game, one terrible game. Next is strong. The next one's terrible. So on and so forth. Second period. 3-0. Again, with a second period lead. Finish it out for us, Minnesota. 3-0. Please, for the love of God, Minnesota. Power play early for St. Louis. This will be the dagger. We kill it off. Ten minutes remaining, Minnesota. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. That's how you do it. That is exactly how you do it there, Minnesota. Come out with a late goal. Two-goal lead with four minutes remaining. Three minutes, two minutes, one minute, and... The Minnesota Wild beats the St. Louis Blues in six games. A relatively close game number six. Pedersen with by far his strongest game of the postseason. Definitely exactly what the doctor ordered. And we walk out of round number one and we will be facing... Oh, I already see who it is. If you can see right down there in the playoff race or whatever you call that screen. I'm not exactly what you're sure what you call that. The Colorado Avalanche for the second straight year. We will be playing the second best team in the second round of the postseason. Oh, this will be an absolute barn burner. Oh, gosh. Here's hoping we walk out on the right side of history again. Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this one, please leave a like, leave a comment, share with people who think may enjoy this sort of thing. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.